Rick and Shera Melik, in their discussion about the role of a successful Bible teacher, emphasize the importance of being proficient in interpreting the Bible. They accentuate that the Bible, being the primary source of instruction in Christian teachings, demands a deep understanding of its messages, both in the historical context of when it was written and in its relevance to contemporary readers and listeners. The Meliks affirm the criticality of content in teaching, suggesting that while teaching techniques can be improved upon, the foundation of good content is indispensable. They delve into the significant responsibility that comes with teaching spiritual truths, notably the unique accountability to God and the potential impact on the eternal destinies of their audience. This responsibility is asserted by references to the Bible itself, including Jesus' stern warning in Matthew 18. 6 about the severity of teaching false content and James's admonition in James 3. 1 about the gravity of the teaching role. Addressing the challenges faced by Bible teachers, the Meliks highlight the temporal and cultural disconnect between the time of the Bible's authorship and the present day, a gap spanning 2,000 to 3,500 years. They acknowledge that many teachers follow theological guidelines that help in maintaining doctrinal accuracy on fundamental issues, such as salvation, heaven and hell, and the crucifixion of Christ. However, they caution against the tendency to interpret every biblical passage solely through these doctrinal lenses. The Meliks argue that the Bible, with its rich complexity and variety of messages conveyed through different authors and contexts, should not be oversimplified. They stress that not every passage is directly about key Christian doctrines. The challenge for teachers is to navigate this complexity, interpreting and applying the Bible's teachings in a manner that is both true to its original context and relevant to modern audiences. This requires a thoughtful approach to both the content and its presentation, ensuring accuracy and relevance in teaching. Also, Rick Melick and Shera Melick, in their exploration of communication models, draw a parallel between the simplicity of modern technological communication and the fundamental principles of effective human communication. They identify three essential elements that are crucial for successful information exchange, whether it be through advanced technologies like radio waves or through traditional methods like writing and speaking. The first element is the encoder or the sending device. In technological terms, this is akin to a radio transmitter, but in human communication it refers to the individual or entity conveying the message. This encoder is responsible for formulating the message in a way that is suitable for the intended audience. This involves a strategic selection of language, mode of communication, such as writing or speaking, and an appropriate style that resonates with the receiver. The encoder's primary objective is to create a message that is not only understandable, but also engaging and relevant to the audience. The second critical component is the message itself, paralleled to the signal in technological communication. The message, or the content of the communication, is the heart of the process. Its effectiveness is measured by its clarity, language, and the appeal it holds for the receiver. A message must be crafted in a manner that is both attractive and interesting. Even the most significant messages can lose their impact if they fail to engage the audience. Authors and communicators, therefore, pay meticulous attention to the style, vocabulary, illustrations, and overall presentation to maximize the message's impact. Moreover, the decoder or receiving device represents the audience, the reader or listener. This element is analogous to a radio receiver. The success of communication heavily relies on the decoder's ability to understand and appreciate the language, style and vocabulary used by the encoder. Misunderstandings can arise if the decoder faces difficulty in processing the message, which can lead to a range of issues, from complete misinterpretation to a lack of interest or distorted understanding. These problems are similar to the static in radio communications, where the intended message is lost or altered due to transmission issues. In sum, Melik's model indicates the interconnectedness of the encoder, message and decoder in the communication process. Effective communication is achieved when these three components are in harmony, ensuring that the intended message is accurately transmitted and received. 
Furthermore, Rick and Shera Melik's exploration of the Bible treats it not just as a religious text, but as a piece of literature, complete with its own language, style, structure, and inherent meanings. This perspective is essential for understanding how the Bible communicates its messages. The Meliks maintain the concept of encoding and decoding in literature. The author encodes a message into text, and the reader decodes or interprets this message. In the context of the Bible, the authors are the diverse individuals who wrote its various books, and the primary encoder, or the source of the message, is considered to be God. The choice of God to convey his message through human authors, rather than directly to every individual, is a significant point of discussion. The Melik suggests that this method was more practical and meaningful than the alternative of continuous, direct revelation to every person in every generation. By choosing specific authors in specific historical and cultural contexts, God's message was given a form that is both timeless and anchored in real human experiences. This method allows for the message to be applicable across different ages and cultures, maintaining its relevance over time. In addition, this approach points out the importance of historical and cultural contexts in understanding the Bible. The various books of the Bible were written in distinct historical periods and cultural settings, which influenced their content and form. Recognizing this helps in interpreting the Bible more accurately and appreciatively. Further, it invites readers to engage with the Bible, not just as a divine revelation, but also as a complex literary work that reflects the human experience and the historical moments in which it was written. This view encourages a deeper exploration of the text, inviting readers to consider both the divine and human aspects of its composition. Besides, Rick and Shera Melik dive into the intricate and multifaceted nature of the authorship of the Bible, reiterating the complexity and diversity intrinsic to its creation. The Bible, comprised of 66 books, is traditionally attributed to around 39 authors, spanning a considerable historical time frame from about 1400 BC to AD 100. This period encompasses a variety of linguistic and cultural contexts, with the majority of the Old Testament in Hebrew, parts in Aramaic, reflecting the influence of Persian political conquests, and the New Testament predominantly in Greek, the lingua franca of the Roman Empire. The presence of Latin and Aramaic phrases also points to the diverse cultural and political milieu of the era. Understanding the unique context of each author is critical for proper biblical interpretation. The Meliks repeat that authors, even within the same historical period, wrote under diverse circumstances. For instance, the Old Testament prophets addressed different regions and situations, ranging from the southern kingdom of Judah to the northern kingdom of Israel and extending to foreign powers like Assyria and Babylon. Contrasting viewpoints have existed historically regarding the importance of the human author in scriptural interpretation. Some have contended that divine inspiration overrides the need to consider the historical and cultural context of the human authors. However, the Meliks advocate for a recognition of the Bible's dual authorship nature, both divine and human, drawing a parallel to the dual nature of Jesus Christ. Acknowledging the human aspects of the Bible entails a thorough study of the author's specific circumstances, languages, writing styles, personalities, and thought processes. In essence, Rick and Shera Melik's perspective underlines the importance of recognizing and understanding both the human and divine elements in the Bible's authorship. This approach is essential for a holistic and nuanced interpretation of the Scriptures, appreciating the rich tapestry of historical, cultural and spiritual influences that shape its content. Additionally, Rick and Shera Melik place significant emphasis on the concept of the message within the Bible, presenting it as the core element of the communication process between the divine and humanity. They underscore that the Bible itself, rather than its human authors, is the recipient of divine inspiration. This doctrine of inspiration suggests that while the authors were certainly influenced by the Holy Spirit, it is the Scripture itself that embodies God's message. The complexity of interpreting the Bible is a prominent theme in their discussion. The text, written over 1,500 years in a variety of languages and cultural contexts, 
presents unique challenges for understanding. This historical and linguistic diversity raises essential questions about the necessity of reading the Bible in its original languages versus understanding it in contemporary translations. The Meliks emphasize the importance of grappling with these challenges to fully comprehend the Bible's message in one's own language. The nature of the biblical message is another critical aspect explored. The Meliks accentuate that the Bible does not provide exhaustive knowledge on every topic, but contains sufficient guidance for living a life of faith and godliness. This necessitates a focus not only on the explicit teachings and commands, but also on the underlying principles the Bible endorses. These principles are often implied rather than directly stated, yet they are vital for a comprehensive understanding of the Scripture's overarching message. Also, the Meliks discuss the role of the author's background in interpreting the Bible. They debate that understanding the author's context is more than an academic exercise. It is a key to unlocking the meaning of complex passages. This perspective affirms the importance of thoughtful and prayerful engagement with the text, aiming to discover its contemporary relevance and significance. Such an approach asserts the necessity of a careful study to discern the enduring message of the Bible in our modern world. Moreover, Rick and Sheremelik's insights into biblical interpretation focus significantly on the role and understanding of the readers of the biblical texts. They dispute that most books in the Bible were written for specific audiences, as indicated by the titles of the books like Romans, Colossians and Corinthians. For books where the audience isn't explicitly mentioned, the reader must discern the intended audience from the content, such as Isaiah's prophecies to Judah. Timothy's presence in Ephesus, or Peter's epistles to Christians in modern-day Turkey. The Meliks highlight the importance of understanding the historical and cultural context of these original audiences. This understanding is crucial to grasp the full meaning and intent behind the biblical messages. For example, the Corinthians would have understood cultural references and practices like hairstyles, symbolizing marital honor or the metaphor of the cows of Bashan used by Amos. Modern readers therefore need to put themselves in the shoes of the original audience to fully comprehend these texts. Interpreting the Bible also involves recognizing that the original readers were expected to understand and react to God's message. The text often addressed issues of conduct, urging readers to reflect and potentially change their behavior. Understanding these nuances helps modern readers apply the lessons in contemporary contexts. Another significant aspect discussed by the Meliks is the role of the Holy Spirit in interpretation. They affirm that while the Holy Spirit guides contemporary readers, interpretations must align with the original intent of the author and the understanding of the initial audience. Any deviation suggests a modern reader's misunderstanding or lack of knowledge about the original context. They indicate that there's only one correct interpretation, deeply rooted in the historical and cultural background of the text, yet it remains applicable and insightful for modern readers. This approach bridges the gap between ancient texts and contemporary understanding, ensuring that the messages of the Bible are both accurately comprehended and relevant. Furthermore, Rick Melick and Shera Melick dig into the complexities of communication, particularly as it relates to the interpretation of ancient texts, with a focus on biblical scriptures. They begin by addressing a fundamental assumption in communication, the intent of the authors. The Meliks question whether ancient writers, including biblical authors, ever envisioned their writings being analysed by future generations. This perspective is rooted in a critical examination of the ancient authors' awareness of their work's potential longevity and impact. They cite 2 Peter 1.10, 12 to illustrate the point that these authors may have been aware of their divine inspiration, but possibly lacked full understanding of the long-term implications of their prophecies. The communication model proposed by the Meliks operates on two distinct levels, synchronic and diachronic. Synchronic communication pertains to a specific time frame, maintaining the necessity of a shared language and mutual understanding for successful communication. The story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, 1, 9 serves as a biblical example where the sudden emergence of multiple languages 
led to a breakdown in communication, illustrating the importance of a common linguistic foundation. Diachronic communication, in contrast, spans across different eras, focusing on how texts are interpreted over time. The authors use the example of Egyptian hieroglyphs and the Rosetta Stone to point out the challenges and importance of translating and understanding ancient texts in a modern context. This part of the model reiterates the role of translation and contextual understanding in interpreting texts from different eras, particularly those with significant historical and cultural gaps from the present. Central to the Melik's thesis is the idea that effective communication, especially in the realm of biblical interpretation, requires shared human attributes. These include a common sense of order, rationality, capabilities, personality and responsibility. However, the authors argue that beyond these fundamental aspects, there are three key areas of sharing that are crucial for accurate interpretation of biblical texts. While these specific areas are not detailed in the summary, they likely refer to the necessity of shared cultural, linguistic and historical contexts, which are essential for a deeper and more nuanced understanding of ancient writings. This approach repeats the importance of not just linguistic and historical knowledge, but also cultural empathy and contextual awareness in interpreting texts that originate from vastly different times and cultures. In addition, Rick and Shera Melik's insights into language and its significance in understanding ancient texts like the Bible underline a fundamental truth. A common linguistic foundation is crucial for effective communication and interpretation. They draw a parallel with the historical example of Alexander the Great, who, recognizing the diversity of Greek dialects within his realm, established Koine Greek as a common language to unify his empire. This historical anecdote serves as a metaphor for the challenges faced in modern times when interpreting ancient texts. Translations, while useful, present limitations. The Meliks underscore that readers often overestimate their understanding of ancient texts based on their translated versions. Texts like the Iliad, for instance, continue to be subjects of scholarly debate, suggesting that translations can't fully capture the nuances of the original languages. The Meliks emphasize that every translation is influenced by text theory, which textual reading is best, and translation theory, which approach to translation is best, making it impossible for translations to convey the full meaning of the original text. The ideal solution, according to the Meliks, is learning the ancient languages themselves, such as Greek and Hebrew for biblical texts. This approach, however, isn't practical for everyone. Therefore, they recommend using secondary resources like commentaries, translations and Bible dictionaries. These resources, while helpful, also come with their own limitations, as they are dependent on the translator's and commentator's knowledge, as well as their theological and philosophical assumptions. Further, the proliferation of translations reflects a diversity of opinions about specific nuances of ancient texts, further complicating the interpretation process. Modern readers are encouraged to develop a discerning approach, critically evaluating the resources for their accuracy, reliability and alignment with the reader's own theological and philosophical views. The Meliks conclude that it's crucial to recognize that any modern translation of scripture is, after all, an adaptation. An attempt to mold ancient patterns of writing into formats that are comprehensible in contemporary cultures. They advocate for a critical approach to Bible study, always considering the original Greek or Hebrew texts to grasp the true essence of the scriptures. Besides, Rick and Shera Melik's discussion on worldview examines the understanding of cultural core values and perspectives as essential in comprehending different worldviews. They accentuate that individuals from varied cultural backgrounds, like Chinese, South Africans, Koreans and Polynesians, perceive the world distinctly compared to Americans. This difference is evident not only in contemporary, synchronic, but also in historical, diachronic contexts, indicating that modern societies might struggle to fully grasp the worldviews of ancient civilizations. A significant turning point in the concept of worldview, according to the Meliks, is marked by the Copernican Revolution and the emergence of modern science. This shift dramatically altered perceptions of the world, 
creating a gap between modern and prescientific perspectives. This raises an important question about the extent to which scientific understanding infiltrates one's worldview, particularly when considering the biblical focus on morality and divine relationships. The authors address the worldview of the scripture writers, challenging the fallacy of a unified whole that suggests a homogeneous ancient thought process. They contend that while some false worldviews might have influenced the authors of scripture, these seldom affect the interpretation of the texts. They suggest that divine protection ensured the truthfulness of what was written in the scriptures. Central to the discussion of worldview is the relationship between God and humanity, touching upon concepts such as sin, creation, humanness, morality, the supernatural, and the afterlife. Despite modern skepticism towards biblical explanations of human history, the Meliks affirm that many still accept the Bible without reservation. They assert that understanding and affirming the Bible's unique worldview, which is distinct from any natural worldview yet expressed within localized cultures, is crucial for its accurate interpretation. The Bible's narrative, as per the Meliks, offers a cohesive and logical understanding of creation and existence, rooted in the origins of the human story as recorded in the scriptures. Additionally, Rick Melick and Shera Melick's discussion about culture in biblical interpretation highlights the profound impact of cultural understanding in comprehending sacred texts. They define culture as a societal organization reflecting its worldview. This includes how a society develops its religious practices, rituals and celebrations based on core worldview values. The distinction between ancient and modern cultures is a pivotal aspect of their argument. Ancient cultures, according to the Meliks, were deeply intertwined with religious beliefs and practices, often focused on appeasing deities. These practices influenced everything from fertility rituals to legal codes. In contrast, modern Western societies have significantly diverged from these ancient practices. However, to fully grasp biblical texts, an understanding of these ancient cultures is indispensable. The Bible itself addresses cultural differences, often critiquing practices that conflict with Christian teachings, such as child sacrifices or idol worship. It advocates for a transformation of cultural norms with a focus on Christian principles. The process of interpreting cultural elements within the Bible is complex. It involves understanding the ancient cultural practices, discerning the biblical author's intentions in referencing these practices, and appropriately applying these understandings to contemporary cultural contexts. This multi-layered approach indicates the importance of context in biblical interpretation. The authors raise a critical question about the necessity of formal theological education, like seminary, for proper biblical interpretation. While they acknowledge the value of seminary in accelerating learning, they also recognize that not everyone has access to such education. They maintain that it's possible to attain the necessary understanding without formal education. The key lies in diligent study and interpretation, ensuring that applications made are consistent with ancient practices and yet relevant to present-day cultures. This approach demystifies the Bible making it accessible and pertinent to modern readers. Also, Rick Melick and Shera Melick presents a comprehensive approach to understanding the Bible, pointing out the necessity of recognizing its dual nature of authorship, divine inspiration and human writing. This concept is central to their thesis, debating that effective Bible study requires balancing these two distinct yet interconnected dimensions. The first dimension, the laws of the Spirit focuses on the divine aspect of the Bible. It acknowledges that the scriptures are not just historical documents, but are inspired by God. This dimension requires a deep spiritual understanding and sensitivity. It involves interpreting the Bible within the framework of faith, recognizing the spiritual truths and divine wisdom embedded in its texts. This spiritual approach is essential for grasping the theological and moral teachings of the Bible, allowing readers to connect with its deeper spiritual meanings. The second dimension is the laws of human communication. This aspect reiterates the human element in the Bible's composition. The authors dispute that despite its divine inspiration, 
the Bible was written by human authors in specific historical and cultural contexts. Therefore, understanding the human dimension involves analyzing the language, literary styles, historical settings, and cultural backgrounds prevalent at the time of writing. This scholarly approach is crucial for a contextual understanding of the scriptures, ensuring that interpretations are grounded in the realities of the periods in which the texts were written. The metaphor of two parallel tracks of a railroad effectively illustrates the necessity of both dimensions for a balanced and accurate interpretation of the Bible. Neglecting either aspect can lead to misinterpretations or incomplete understanding. By integrating both the divine and human elements, students of the Bible can achieve a more holistic and profound comprehension of its teachings. This dual approach ensures that interpretations are not only theologically sound, but also contextually relevant, providing a comprehensive understanding of the biblical message. Moreover, Rick Melick and Shera Melick explores the enigmatic realm of spiritual principles, particularly focusing on their relationship with human understanding and scriptural interpretation. The book repeats that spiritual principles defy conventional understanding, transcending the objective and legalistic frameworks commonly associated with religious doctrines. Central to this exploration is the Holy Spirit, depicted not as a mere theological construct, but as an active, dynamic presence that operates beyond human attempts to categorize or confine it within strict doctrinal boundaries. The Holy Spirit's role is portrayed as pivotal in the interaction between the divine and human consciousness. This interaction is crucial for attaining a level of understanding that transcends human reasoning alone. The authors underline that the Holy Spirit, in conjunction with the human spirit and mind, facilitates insights that are otherwise unattainable. This synergy is essential for a deeper comprehension of spiritual truths, which often remain elusive under purely rational scrutiny. In discussing the interpretation of spiritual texts, the book introduces what are termed the laws of the Holy Spirit. These laws, described as basic and clear, comprise three primary principles that guide the interpretative process. The authors clarify that while adherence to these laws does not guarantee an infallible interpretation of scriptural texts, neglecting them almost certainly leads to erroneous understanding. Misinterpretation, as the book suggests, can manifest in several ways, including the inability to formulate coherent conclusions or a failure to grasp the full spectrum and significance of spiritual truths. Melix underscore the risks associated with disregarding the Holy Spirit's guidance in spiritual interpretation. The consequences of such neglect are portrayed as significant, potentially leading to a distorted or incomplete understanding of scriptural messages. Conversely, they emphasize the advantages of aligning with the Holy Spirit's direction, suggesting that such alignment fosters a more accurate and profound comprehension of spiritual texts. This guidance, according to the authors, is not only beneficial, but also essential for those seeking to navigate the complexities of spiritual interpretation and to gain a more profound understanding of their faith. Furthermore, Rick Melick and Shera Melick explore the essential role of conversion in understanding the spiritual truths of Christianity. They propose that while non-Christians can intellectually comprehend the literal meanings of Scripture, a deep and transformative understanding of its spiritual truths requires conversion to Christianity, signifying a shift from self-centrality to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The authors use the metaphor of an archaeologist to describe the process of uncovering the layers of meaning in Scripture. They acknowledge that non-Christians may possess superior analytical tools and methods for studying the text. However, they contend that these tools alone are insufficient for grasping the spiritual reality of Scripture, which has the power to transform an individual's understanding and perspective of Christian life. Referencing 1 Corinthians 2.14, 3.3, the Meliks accentuate Apostle Paul's teachings on the role of the Holy Spirit in comprehending God's truth. At conversion, according to Paul, a person undergoes a significant transformation receiving the Holy Spirit, which is crucial for understanding and embracing spiritual truth. The concept of being soulish or natural, as opposed to spiritual, is central to their argument. 
Non-Christians, they debate, do not have the Holy Spirit operating in their lives in the same way Christians do, limiting their ability to receive and understand spiritual truths. The terms soul and flesh are used to describe the natural state of unconverted individuals, characterized by egocentricity and rebellion against God. In contrast, Christians who have welcomed the Holy Spirit into their lives are capable of joyfully embracing and understanding spiritual truths. This distinction, the authors affirm, is not just about intellectual comprehension, but involves a deeper experiential and relational engagement with spiritual truths. Non-Christians might be able to recite doctrine or engage in theological discourse, but the transformative understanding and acceptance of spiritual truths, according to the Meliks, require conversion and the active presence of the Holy Spirit in one's life. In addition, the second law of the Spirit, as explicated by Rick Melick and Shera Melick, centers on the profound concept of commitment to Christ, drawing heavily from 1 Corinthians 2.15. This scripture, penned by Apostle Paul, sheds light on a defining characteristic of a spiritually converted individual, the ability to discern and evaluate all things while remaining inscrutable to human judgment. This notion asserts two pivotal elements in the life of a believer. Firstly, the essence of a spiritual person is intricately tied to the influence and presence of the Holy Spirit. This characterization unfolds in a multi-layered manner. The inception point is receiving the Spirit, a transformative event marking the commencement of a new spiritual trajectory. Following this, the believer exhibits a welcoming acceptance of spiritual truths, an openness that is critical for their spiritual maturation. The embracement of these truths is not a mere intellectual exercise, but a heartfelt commitment that reshapes their perception and interaction with the divine. Secondly, the journey of a converted and committed individual is profoundly guided by the Holy Spirit. This guidance is not just in actions, but in the adoption of a new mindset, the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit instills a reformed way of thinking and valuing, steering the believer away from worldly perspectives to a focus on divine principles. This shift is not only deep, but also all-encompassing, affecting the believer's desires, choices and actions. There emerges an earnest yearning to comprehend and adhere to God's paths, coupled with a commitment to learning from spiritual truths. This learning transcends mere knowledge acquisition. It is a transformative process that moulds the believer's character, decision-making and lifestyle. In essence, the second law of the Spirit, as elucidated by Melik and Melik, highlights the transformative role of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. It speaks of a change that goes beyond surface-level alterations, delving into the depths of spiritual understanding and commitment. This transformation is evident in the believer's newfound ability to grasp and live according to Christ's teachings, marking a true commitment to Christ and a life led by the Spirit. Further, Rick Melik and Shera Melik explore the third law of the Spirit, focusing on the deepening relationship with God through consecration to His plans. This concept goes beyond mere commitment to Christ. It encompasses a transformative journey guided by the Holy Spirit. Consecration implies a mature understanding and living in God's truth, characterized by a life continually reshaped by the Holy Spirit's influence. It represents an evolution from a basic commitment to a refined, deeply rooted devotion to Christ, indicating a more consecrated Christian life. The authors use Apostle Paul's teachings in 2 Corinthians 3. 3 to illustrate their point. Paul's encounter with the Corinthian church serves as an example of spiritual immaturity, where believers, despite their faith, were living by worldly or fleshly standards. This immaturity was evident in their sectarian behavior, as they clung to different Christian leaders, demonstrating a carnal mindset. Paul's critique indicates the issue of trying to achieve God's work through human means, a trap that the Corinthian church fell into. Besides, in 1 Corinthians 3, the Meliks probe into the concept of Christian carnality. The carnal Christians in Corinth, though converted and committed, were still influenced by their human nature. Their failure to adhere to the Holy Spirit's guidance led to divisions within the church, a clear sign of carnality. 
In contrast, consecration involves a deeper spiritual journey, marked by a dedication to follow the Holy Spirit's direction, avoiding the pitfalls of carnal thinking and behavior. The term consecration is chosen to maintain this spiritual depth. Consecrated Christians distinguish themselves by not only committing to Christ, but by walking in the Holy Spirit's ways, steering clear of carnal thinking and actions. They seek to fulfill God's work, not through human methods, but through divine guidance. The Meliks conclude that a deep understanding and consistent application of the laws of the Spirit are fundamental for sound Bible interpretation. The deeper one's grasp of spiritual truths and their application in life, the greater their comprehension. There is no alternative to walking with the Lord, illuminated by His Word, for true spiritual growth and insight. Last but not least, Rick Melick and Shera Melick, in their discussion of the laws of human communication, focus on the intricate balance between understanding spiritual dimensions and linguistic principles in biblical interpretation. They point out that while some may prioritize spiritual intuition, the dual nature of Scripture's authorship, divine and human, demands a thorough understanding of language and historical context. The concept of the laws of human communication encompasses both general and specific guidelines. The general laws established by early church interpreters include criteria for determining the canon of Scripture. These general laws are foundational in understanding what constitutes authoritative biblical text. On the other hand, specific laws deal more directly with interpreting individual passages within their proper context. This involves diving into the historical background, understanding the author's and the original audience's circumstances, and the cultural nuances that influence the writing. The textual context is equally important. Where a specific passage is seen in relation to the whole Bible, and more specifically, within its particular book. Understanding the broader argument or narrative in which a passage sits is crucial for accurate interpretation. Beyond context, comprehending the content of a passage is vital. This includes analyzing the logical flow, deciphering word meanings, and extracting underlying theological principles. This process is often the most challenging and time-consuming aspect of biblical study, but is indispensable for a meaningful understanding of the text. Additionally, the authors stress the importance of understanding the author's intent and applying it to contemporary settings. This involves discerning the historical reasons behind the writing, the specific language used, and how these elements address the reader's needs. Modern readers must then translate these insights into their own cultural and temporal context, identifying what is universally applicable and what remains specific to the original context. Melik and Melik advocate for a harmonious blend of spiritual and scholarly approaches. Beginning with a prayer for divine guidance signifies a readiness for transformation based on the Scripture's teachings. This spiritual openness should be coupled with a disciplined study method reiterating the need for both spiritual and intellectual engagement with the text. In sum, applying the laws of human communication in biblical study is a complex task that involves understanding the historical, cultural, and textual contexts, as well as the content and intent of the Scripture. It requires a balance of spiritual receptivity and rigorous academic study, a combination of art and science in interpreting the divine and human elements of the biblical text. In conclusion, Rick and Shera Melik's insights into Bible teaching and interpretation repeat the vital role of understanding the Bible's messages in both their historical context and contemporary relevance. They stress the significance of accurate and profound content in teaching, acknowledging the weighty responsibility that comes with imparting spiritual truths especially considering the potential impact on the eternal destinies of listeners. This responsibility is underlined by biblical references, such as Jesus' warning in Matthew 18, 6, and James's admonition in James 3, 1, underscoring the gravity of misleading teachings. Also their discussion extends to the realm of communication, where they draw parallels between the simplicity of modern technological communication and the fundamental principles of effective human communication. They outline three essential elements, 
the encoder, the individual or entity conveying the message, the message itself, and the decoder, the audience. This model emphasizes the necessity of clear, engaging, and audience-appropriate messaging. Moreover, the Meliks treat the Bible not merely as a religious text, but as a complex piece of literature, involving a process of encoding and decoding messages. The divine is considered the primary message source, with human authors acting as intermediaries. This perspective necessitates an appreciation of the historical and cultural contexts in which the Bible was written, accentuating the importance of understanding these aspects for accurate interpretation. Furthermore, in exploring the multifaceted nature of the Bible's authorship, they affirm the diversity of its composition, penned by various authors over centuries. This complexity demands a recognition of both the divine inspiration and the human elements in its creation, calling for a nuanced interpretation that appreciates the Bible's rich tapestry of historical, cultural, and spiritual influences. In addition, the Meliks investigate the role of readers, asserting the need to understand the original audience's historical and cultural context. They advocate for interpretations that are true to the original intent and understanding, while also being relevant to contemporary readers, bridging the gap between ancient texts and modern comprehension. In summary, Rick and Shera Melik's work offers a comprehensive understanding of Bible teaching and interpretation, focusing on the importance of historical context, effective communication, and the balance between divine inspiration and human authorship in understanding the scriptures.